What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Fat Boy Trucking, checking in with y'all, man. And I just want to real quick thank everybody. It's getting close to Christmas, holidays. Uh, you know, I want to thank all you guys and wish y'all a happy holidays for checking in, watching my videos, showing me the support you guys have. Um, this video today, we're going to talk about what these other trucker vloggers won't tell you. So, before we get into that, Real quick, make sure you hit that like button. Turn around and hit that subscribe button. All right? And while you at it, hit that little bell and hit all notifications. But let's get into the video. I just want to talk about some things, you know. I actually had a subscriber, um, you know, he came on to make trucking. And uh, things didn't work out. I don't know if he's still planning to join or he's looking for a new situation. But, you know, I kind of feel bad about the situation and stuff. So, and honestly, a lot of these vloggers, and even including myself, one, the stuff that we discuss overall, stuff that we've gone through, we talk about what we, uh, basically, you know, what we experience. But uh, to take our words to the T, I want to do that because at uh, the end of the day, you got to do your information. You got to ask the right questions with these recruiters. And the reason behind that is because, one, I'm going to tell you right now, these companies, a lot of their policies are gray area. Just because they do it for one situation, they may not do it for the next situation. And they do that for their advantage. You know, I don't care what anybody tells me. If it don't make sense to them to pay you, they're not going to pay you, you know. And uh, I've been a victim of that circumstances a couple of times. So, you know, and I trust me, I know it sucks, you know. So, end of the day, you have to do the most research you can. All right, and the other thing is policies are constantly changing in companies. You know, uh, one minute you hear one thing, next minute they change to another thing. Then you just found out they changed it. Half the times they don't even let you know that they changed the policy if you're already working. I mean, I find out newer policies from new drivers coming in. Oh, they told me this. They told me that. I was like, oh, well, wow, that's new information for me. I, I didn't know. So, yeah, you know, and, and, and that's why I say it's key. You know, I do a lot of research. I read reviews on uh, Indeed, Glassdoor, about companies, uh, Driver Pulse. Because, um, you know, this trucking, like I said, is um, it's not a job. I mean, people call it a career. I don't even call it a career. It's really a lifestyle if you're a trucker and you're really into this and you're going to make it, I mean, you're going to eat, breathe, sleep, trucking. You know, I mean, last night I fell asleep watching trucking YouTube videos, you know. I'm always constantly trying to learn, trying to uh, gain as much knowledge as I can in the industry and what's going on. You know, it's so funny. I, you hear two things right now. You hear it's a trucker bloodbath, a lot of trucking companies shutting down which they are, but then there's also a shortage of a lot of truck drivers. They need, they got all these freights and nobody to run it. Which is also true too. So, you know, I just heard about this one company, I'm not gonna mention no company's name, but if you guys are watching the news, they ended up shutting down. Um, they didn't tell the drivers, drivers are stuck on the road. And, um, basically cut off all their gas cards. They were literally, um, I heard other truckers helping these guys fill up their gas tanks to help them get home for the holidays and or even giving them rides. And it's sad. You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, um, the trucking industry, it's, it's rough. It's rough. You know, you work long hours just to make semi-decent money. And you really break it down hourly. I mean, some of the hours you put into your day, you really make it like ten to twelve dollars an hour. You know, you turn around because 
I mean, there's days I work 13, 14 hours, and I get paid 130 a day, no matter how many hours I work. So I work 13 hours. My day was $10 a day, uh, 10 hours, a, ugh, $10 an hour. That's it. So making sure this trucker don't hit me. You look a little scared pulling in. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then on top of that, when you, you um, when you get to the shipper and Cassini, they treat you like garbage. Half of them, um, you know, I've been to where they, you're not allowed to use their restrooms. They don't have no porta potties out there. And you're stuck on this truck. What are you gonna do? You know, I, I I know one incident where a trucker went side of the trailer and started, and then. Um, he had one of their company drivers saw him doing it and then he started yelling at him. But at the end of the day, I'm like, you refuse to let the man use your bathroom. You know, he probably drove eight to 10 hours to get to you, make sure he gets to the appointment on time. And you won't even let him use your restroom. It's what we deal with, you know, uh, or show up. I mean, I had one company because I was literally 30 minutes late. Now, thank God, it was a little shag run. It was like 20 miles, this little run they had me pick up. But it was just to get my day started and get me rolling. And um, the company sent me the load right when it was supposed to be there. So I ended up being like 30, maybe 40 minutes late because, like I said, it was just 20 miles and I got hooked up to it pretty quick. But because I was 30, 40 minutes late, it was no fault to my own. Like I said, the, the, the load was supposed to be there at 10 o'clock and they signed me the load at like 10, 10 or 10, 05, somewhere around there. I can't remember specifically. It was a year ago. And um, I ran, I rushed over there as soon as possible. And a security guard told me straight to my face, oh, you late. They're going to stick it to you. I, th- I laughed it off, thought she was joking. Uh, yeah, they stuck it to me for a 22-mile run. I got stuck at the shipper for 10 hours. There was nobody there. They weren't loaded, nobody. They went and took a break. They were just playing around. They literally started right before they had to close, and then they rushed and tried to get it all done. And basically, I lost the whole day because of it, because I ended up running out of hours. So, just because of that, and it's, at this time, I was running cent per mile. I uh, was just fresh out of uh, trucking school. At this time, I was getting 30 cents. 37 cents a mile. So did do the math. 37 times 22 miles. That was my pay for that whole day. You know, I think I, sometimes I, I think these shippers get confused and these guys, they think we get paid by the hour and we don't. We, we, we literally got to run by the mile. Even, even at May. Yeah. They give you a daily pay, but that's a daily pay for your mileage that they expect you to run. So you at least know you're getting paid this amount. Now what they do, and why originally I thought was anything after 8,000 miles, you get sense differential. Come to find out from my last check, I don't know if it was because of the change policy or what the what was going on because my first bonus didn't work out like that. I got everything. But this time, they're telling me, no, it don't work like that. We got to break down, see the averages, this and that. I can't explain it. I don't understand it. So I'm not even going to try to explain to you guys the pay grade. All I know, you get $130 uh, dollars a day. If your experience, you're fresh out of school, is actually 115 I came over here with almost a year experience, so they started me out a little more. And then um, if you hit... 8,000 or more miles, you get a uh, safety bonus. But not a cent differential. I honestly, I thought I knew how it worked. But apparently they told me I was wrong. So, I, I, I was giving y'all information that I believed was correct. 
And like I was uh, telling you, I had one of my subscribers came to May Truck and they'd have a mentor for him. What they told me that their policy is that you know you get sent home, you get your daily pay. Well, he let me know that they're not paying him. And this is where I say situation fall in a gray area because I actually had an incident and all these trucking companies do it. Some are, you know, you get a nice DM or somebody's cool. They understand. I'll pay you some money. And then you get other ones that act like they're giving you money out of their own pocket. Like, you know, it's their money. But um, I, I ended up, I was coming out of a home time. I got out of my truck, getting ready to ride. <coughs> Excuse me. I was assigned a load, um, started driving, and then I noticed my AC to my truck was on cold, full blast, but it was blowing, burning hot air to the point I got nervous. I'm like, man, uh, I don't know, I hope something will blow up in this engine or anything, you know? And because of that, I had to take it into the shop. I'm like, look, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. Something ain't right. Y'all need to get this looked at. So I took it in and ended up taking them over uh, literally two weeks to get it, everything supposedly taken care of. So come my next check, I'm like, all right, well, at least I got to pay my daily pay. I'm not going to hit my bonus this month because I was out two weeks. But at least I'm going to hit my daily pay. I see my paycheck, and I don't have, I have like one or two days paid. Then they turn around and told me, well, because you were on home time, I said, well, that's not what you guys told me your policy is. Your policy is if I'm ready, I was on a truck, I get paid. Well, they switched that whole tone up. I went toe-to-toe. Um, like I said, I ended up losing, but I guess out of feeling bad for me, they threw a few extra dollars on my paycheck. And I had to take basically the L on the rest of the money. And it's not the first incident. So, and, and like I said, I, I worked for Warner and I worked for May. And I had this incident happen with both companies. Actually, way more with Warner than I do here. Um, Warner, I mean, every, because Tuesday they do a uh, paycheck. Every Tuesday I had a call, fight, and make sure my paycheck it was correct. I mean, I knew my fleet managers were annoyed with me, but guess what? End of the day, I'd rather you be annoyed and hate me than me calling on Thursday or Friday, whenever pay go through, ready to kill one of y'all because my paycheck ain't right. But I, I, I knew, because every time I did it, I'm just like, all right, you know what? They should get it right by now. I learned my lesson. My paycheck was always messed up. So that's what I'm telling you. I mean, it, and, and apparently, like, even from all the YouTube videos I watch, it's, it's a problem that goes across the board. All these major carriers do it. They tell you every time. I keep a notebook right here. On my phone, I keep notes on how many miles, every little thing I do, what the trip number is, how many miles I run, all this, so I can make sure my pay adds up. And trust me, if you don't pay attention or you don't find out the policy, you will get ripped off. You will. I promise you, you will. Maybe not every check, but you will. So, that's why I say do your research. Keep track of everything you do. Keep it written down. Keep documents of everything. Like all my trip paperwork, they're all up here. I keep everything. People say, oh, after a couple months you can throw them away. I save them all. You know why? Because end of the day, if I ever need to pull it out and be like, nope, right here, here's this. I ran it. This sign right here is sent this day. I got it. end of the day, you have to protect yourself. You got to protect yourself out here on the road and you got to protect yourself. Make sure you get your pay right. All right. Now, like I said, you know, uh, all of us vloggers, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. 
these guys go, yeah, this is how we're going. This is what it is. Da, 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 da. He don't know they changed the policy that day. Or he don't know, guess what? That's one of their areas that they're gray areas and it's really up to their discretion. Because be honest with you, everything is up to their discretion. They don't got to do nothing they don't want to do. And what are you going to do? By the time you hire a lawyer and pay all this money, it's going to cost you more than what they owed you. So damn if you do, damn if you don't. That's why I say, man, you got to really, really, really do your research about the company, you know, and we all got breaking points. You can't deal with it no more. Just because one company is good for me, don't make it good for you. I'm hollering May Trucking. I work here. I enjoy it overall. I mean, like I said, I have had incidents that I got pissed off. Yeah, it's going to be everywhere you go. But end of the day, right now, this is the best situation for me. Maybe six months later or not. Maybe five years later, it may not. And I decide, all right, I need to move forward. But at this moment in my trucking career, <clears throat> they're the right company for me. You got to call and you got to talk to every single company you can. Find out what they're hiring, what they offer, what's the difference. Do you guys pay uh, loaded miles and empty miles? Do you guys got insurance? How much money is insurance? How's your guy work if you break down? How's my orientation go? Uh, if you ain't got a trainer for me, am I still going to get paid? These are all questions you need to ask up front. And if it's possible, try to give it, get them to send it to you and write it. I know it's a lot harder said and done because a lot of them ain't going to want to do that. But if it's in writing, they're going to have to honor it. So that's my advice for you guys this week. And like I said, you know, um, end of the day, all of us vloggers, we just talk about what we're going through and stuff. Um, what, what our experience to give you the best advice that we know we can give you, you know what I'm saying? But end of the day, when it comes to dealing with a company and choosing a company to work for and dealing with policies, even though they may not be completely honest with you, and I'm going to tell you right now, recruiters lie. They will lie. And they will continue to lie to get people in that door. So they will do anything they got to do because I'm pretty sure they get some kind of bonus of a certain amount of people to sign up to work for the company. So they will do anything. They're like telemarketers. That's how I see recruiters. They, to me, they remind me as telemarketers. They'll tell you everything you want to hear to get you in that door. But you got to do all your fact finding. Even before I came to May Trucking, I talked to the recruiter. Guess what? I know recruiters lie. So when I was still working at Warner, I bumped into a May Trucking driver, and guess what? I sat him down. I asked him a bunch of questions. How are you getting paid? What's going on with this? Do they give you miles? You know, I mean, that's, that's all things. They're going to tell you, oh, you could earn up to 70,000 miles. Let me tell you right now, your first year, you're only going to earn maybe 30, 35, between 43,000, maybe 45,000 your first year. That's on the high end, 45. You're not going to hit 55, 60, 70,000 your first year unless you get lucky and you know someone. It's not going to happen. Even your second year, second year would be closer to 50, 55,000. Then your third and fourth year, that's when you start. You're going to see the money and better job offers and get in with better companies instead of, because at the end of the day, we're all dealing with student companies. These guys that are two years or less, a lot of us are dealing with student companies still. Warner student company, May Truckin's a student company, Swift is a student company, uh, Prime Inc. is a student company, um, I mean, there's a bunch more, I believe Schneider may or may not be a student, I can't remember off the top of my head, 
all right? And guess what? They know your students, and they want students for a reason. One, they can take advantage of us. They can pay us a lot less because they know it's a huge turnover the first year. Let me tell you right now, 80% of y'all won't make it past training. I, I, I say there's a lot more higher percentage of people that do make it during training in May because May is one of the shortest training periods. They're, any, they're two to three weeks. That's a right now, the two to three weeks. I don't know if they'll change their policy later, but I know the people that came in with me by their third week, they were already on their own, which that's amazing because most companies, at least two months, you're locked in this damn trailer with somebody telling you what to do. Basically, you're doing majority of the damn driving, all right, and, and, and being away from family and not being able to talk to them the way you want. Because you're stuck in a truck with somebody else, it's rough. It's rough. I I, I almost said F it. Just because I didn't want to be in a truck with somebody that long. You know, but, uh, you know, I got accustomed. I fought through it. I know at the end of the day, there was a bigger picture I was working towards. So, you got to remember, man, that's, that's two months of sacrifice. And then you got to do another two years by yourself sacrifice and make a mediocre money. And then you start seeing the decent pay and better jobs and even get it respected a little bit better. Uh, the shippers in uh, con, con C is going to always treat you the same. Like, we're the problem and they're the greatest things since sliced bread. And they look at us with such disgust. I mean, you'll get there's some ones that are really good. I'm not going to say they're all bad, but majority of them just don't give a damn about truckers. People on the road don't give a damn about truckers. The truck stops don't give a damn about truckers. Walmart can't even get their supplies without us, and they don't give a damn about truckers. Now they're putting clearance bars. If you try to drive through their entryway, they'll take the whole roof of your truck off. Because they don't want you in their uh, parking spot. But they make millions of dollars off of us. It's a cold world, man. Everybody hate truckers. But truckers. So, that's it. I'm going to keep it to that. And, you know, I just wanted to, you know, clarify, let you guys know, no matter what you hear in YouTube, make sure you do the research yourself. And double check. At least it gives. We're trying to give you a starter point where to look at, what to look for, or what questions to ask. But end of the day, you got to do your full research and get a hold of these people and know what to ask. You know, what I'm saying I don't want to hear what you can make up to. I want to know what your drivers are averaging right now as a company. I want to know how many miles you guys are running. What's the average driver miles? Those are the things you want to know. So, that's it, y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for checking in, man. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.